part of the book that's getting the most notoriety right now is is where you wrote at his famous practice um, news conference he was drunk. There are a number of people coming out, including Iverson, who are claiming that's not true. What should we but believe here? But there are a number of people who are claiming it is true, yeah, including well, Larry Brown and Coach right. What should we believe here? Right, and, and I guess in fairness, there's not a number of people. There's one person, and that's Stephen <laughs> A. Smith. And uh, Iverson, I wish Iverson, A, had gone on TV himself on Friday to, to dispute this. B, I wish Iverson would have talked to me, and I wish Stephen A. Smith would have talked to me. Sadly, neither of those th uh, three things have happened. So uh, I talked to a dozen people who were in that room. Stephen A. was not in that room. Neither was I. So I didn't give uh, Iverson a blood test that day. Um, I know that everybody that I talked to, not a few people, not most people, every single person that I talked to who was in that room, whether they worked for the team, whether they were a reporter, it's a foregone conclusion that, yes, he was drinking or he had some kind of illicit substance in his body that day. Larry Brown called me Friday night and thought it was hilarious about all the uproar because he said, of course, he was drinking that day. Everybody knows that. I, I got to spend some time around him when he was here uh, with the Nuggets uh, in the declining phase of his career. And I found him to be one of the most delightful people I've ever been around. Right. And if you were to spend time with him, you'd go and he was... He was, uh, and Did you, you party with him? Did you party no, with him? No, but uh, I, I would add to it that. <laughs> that would have been cool. <laughs> there, there was a Dr. <laughs> Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of aspect of him. But in talking to all the people throughout his life, you did get that he had two incredible different sides about him, did you not? Absolutely. I mean, and because of this media uproar, and I get it, I mean, the negative stuff is very clicky and, you know, we like to overreact to things like that, and that's fine. I do the same thing. Uh, when something out there is juicy, I click on it a lot of times. And so there's a lot of things about him blowing the money, you know, hitting his wife, being a pretty terrible dad, that that's going to get shared a lot. But the fact is, there wouldn't be a fall, like I said at the beginning, if there weren't an, an incredible rise. And he is simultaneously awesome and charming as he is frustrating, you know, and disappointing. And I think Larry Brown, you know, really, I mean, he, he had that very relationship. He couldn't stand Allen Iverson sometimes, and he couldn't possibly love him more other times. And so it's, I feel like these days it's hard sometimes to, to have that subtle response to somebody. And I try to make the point in the book that he's not good or bad. He's not a scoundrel or, you know, a loyal guy. He's both. I mean, he's all of those things, and, and that's okay. And the reason people can't give up on him is because he's, you know, maybe his greatest sin is loyalty. I mean, he, he can't cut people off. Even now, I think he'd be in much better shape if he would just say goodbye to some people and he just won't do it. I mean, that's that's part of what makes him him, for better or worse. He is Kent Babb. He's the author of a book called Not a Game, The Incredible Rise and Unthinkable Fall of Allen Iverson.